Okay, so we can share it in different ways. We can invite people. So I can share it with myself, another email of myself, for example, Ahmed at coac.com, coac.com, yep. So it will add me to the report and I can select, do I want another version of myself to be able to view the report only or edit it? Edit is usually for your team, for the people that are going to collaborate with you to maybe help you out with the report and the layout and the calculations, et cetera, to help build the report. And for the client and the end users, we usually give them only view access and we can notify them by email as well. So if we keep this one checked, they will be notified that they have just got access to any report. So I will send it and an invitation will be emailed to me to come and view this report. Another way is to create a link and managing access. The link sharing is up again, just like any Google Doc, just like any Google Sheet. We can change it to anyone in my organization view or edit anyone with the link view or edit so you just paste the link you email the link to someone give it to your clients and they don't need to be logged in into their google account in order to be able to view it in the previous case i had to be logged in my omit at cr.com email address on google workspace so that i could view or edit their report right that was more secure but if you create any, anyone with the link and copy the link, anyone will be able to access it. And with anyone on the internet, it's actually be able to, it's crawlable. So actually search engine might pick up, pick it up and it might appear on people's searches, right? You can do that, create a link, let's do it. And then you can copy it and give it to anyone. Now I'm going to put this in the chat and I'm going to ask you to please click on it. First of all, to make sure that yes, you can access it, which is, yeah, I know you trust me, you can access this. But secondly, because I can show you this functionality, when you're at the edit mode and when you're editor of the report, you can see who is looking at your report, right? If you're in the view mode or if someone is just a viewer of the report, they cannot see this screen. So if they, even if they look at the header, they cannot see who else and how many people are looking at your report right now, okay? And finally, you can schedule emails to be sent to specific people. So maybe this is a report that the CEO or a CFO of an organization just wants to look at every Monday, right? They don't want to remember to come and click on this link to view the report in real time. So you can select to whom do you want to share this report. You can enter their email addresses. You can customize the emails, uh, subject line and body, right? You can select which pages do we want to be shared with them as PDF, right? An email to them. The timing, when they tested should begin this process of scheduling and uh, the repeat schedule. So it could be weekly, monthly, every weekday or custom. So for example, every one day or every one week or every one week on these days. You can be really flexible in the way that you schedule your email delivery and they will be have, they will have access to click on a link and go back and look at the live report if need. So thank you for bearing with me and letting me talk through for more than 80 minutes right now about Data Studio. Quickly, let's go back to whatever we talked about today. So we talked about Data Studio. We saw what was Data Studio. We took a look at interface, the homepage. We learned about reports, versus data sources, the building blocks of Data Studio. We learned about edit mode and view mode, two different modes of Data Studio. We connected to data using data connectors. We learned about dimensions and metrics in data sources that we created. We changed the data type of different fields from numbers to currency at the chart level, at the data source level. We made different type of charts, like a pie chart, a table, a map, a scorecard. And we also looked at the, the way of setting the main and comparison date range for a chart. So for example, our scorecard showed data for the last 14 days, but it was also comparing it to the 14 days prior to that. Okay. We changed the team and layout and the navigation of the report. We configured uh, data and the slide properties of different charts. So we did a lot, as you can see in this short time frame. We saw how we can include and exclude data from any given chart or component. We saw how we can allow the viewer to change the data range of the report. How can we 
add and manage report pages. So add new report pages, rename them, maybe remove them. We didn't say removing them, but it's easy. Just three dots, click and remove. We learned about report and report level and page level components. So the logo and data range, we actually made them report level global. So they appear on all pages at the exact same place. We used functions to create custom fields like projected average order value, the total cost and profits and projected profit. We allowed the viewer to basically have a say and enter parameter. We collected those values, the average increase percentage in average order value using a slider control. And we could we also saw through an input control how we can collect that value. We used parameters, that parameter inside a calculated field to create the projections. We saw how we can blend data in the most simple way possible. And we learn how to share our report with specific people through a link or a scheduled email delivery. That was basically it for today. Next, we start with Data Studio Masterclass. In Data Studio Masterclass, we try to master what we've just seen and covered and much, much more. So there, there's a lot more. Several other functionalities that we couldn't actually even cover in this short session. And we don't want to rush it like today. And we want to learn everything at much deeper level and a data studio ninja, if you want. That's it. Thank you.